Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to determine the derivative of the absolute value function, f of x is the absolute value of x, using the limit definition of derivative. Now, this is, first I want to say that this is not the most intuitive way to, to calculate it, right? What I would say is a much better way is to, is to take a look at the absolute value function right here, and notice that it's two linear functions and calculate the derivative of those linear functions directly, and then notice that it's not differentiable at zero, and then put all of those together. But anyhow, the derivative of the absolute value function gives us this expression, x over the absolute value of x, which is actually equivalent to the absolute value of x over x, and it has a special name. We call this the sign, in other words, S-I-G-N, not the trigonometry sign, the sine function or the signum function. Basically, it gives you put in a number and it gives you the sign of that number, meaning positive or negative. Is it sine positive or is it sine negative? And so it looks something like this. If you give it a positive value and then greater than zero, it's going to give you one. If you give it a negative value, uh, then it's going to give you negative one. And of course, in this case, we're not including zero in our domain because the absolute value function is not defined at zero. Okay, anyhow. So, with the limit definition. So, here we go. The derivative of our function x, which is the absolute value function, we could also write this as d dx absolute value of x, is equal to the limit as h goes to zero, of course, of the function evaluated at x plus h, so in other words, we just plug in x plus h for x, minus the original function, all divided by h. Now, at this point, it should be a little bit weird because we have to sort of simplify or massage this expression in order to be able to plug in h equals zero. Notice that in the numerator, it's very difficult to manipulate absolute values, right? You can't, there's no really algebraic ways you can move those around or something. And so what we're gonna, we wanna do is clear those absolute values. And we're gonna take advantage of the fact that if you take the absolute value of something, maybe I'll call it u, and you square it, that's just equivalent to u squared, because when you square something, it takes the positive version of that anyway. And so you don't need to absolutely value it first and then square it. It's just the same as the thing being squared. And so in, in, the, and then in the numerator, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the numerator by its conjugate and take advantage of difference of squares. Remember that a minus b, which is kind of like what we have in the numerator, x plus h absolute value x plus h minus absolute value of x times a plus b is a squared minus b squared. And here a and b are going to be both our absolute value expressions, a and b. And what, so now our result is going to be with them squared, and so we're going to clear the absolute value. So here's how it's going to work. Limit h to 0 of our expression. And then we're going to multiply by 1 in the numerator absolute value of x plus h plus absolute value of x. And again, we have to divide by the same thing because that by multiplying by one, we're not changing the value of the expression. And then in the numerator, right, we get this times this, which again is a difference of squares, which is equal to the first thing squared, which means absolute value x plus h all squared minus the second thing squared and that's divided by the, the denominator, which we just multiply through. And of course, limit h goes to zero. And from here, again, like I said, we can clear the absolute value signs, so I'll just clear them here. Note, notice that the denominator would be fine. We could plug in h equals zero into the denominator, if not for this h here. And so our goal next is going to be to cancel that an h from the numerator and denominator in order to clear that. So here we go. We have to expand the expression in the numerator. So we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared. So again, this is this. All of this is over h, absolute value of x plus h. Just, just copying it down here. And then notice that the x squared and negative x squareds cancel each other. And so in our numerator, we end up with 2xh plus h squared. In our denominator, we have all of this mess. 
And then notice that both terms in our numerator have a factor of h. So we're going to cancel out one of the factors of h in the numerator and that factor of h in the denominator. So in the numerator, we get 2x, no more h, and then just a single h, not h squared. In our denominator, we have this. And now you can see we can plug in h equals 0 in both the numerator and their denominator. And we won't get we won't end up dividing by 0 or anything like that. So here we go. Plugging in h equals 0 in the numerator, we get 2x. The denominator, you can see in our first expression, we'll get absolute value of x because h is 0. In the second expression, again, we get absolute value of x. And so this gives us 2x over 2 absolute value of x, which is equal to x over absolute value of x, which is the derivative of the absolute value function. OK, so let's just recap what we just did here. We use the limit definition of derivative right here. And we sort of multiplied by what we call the conjugate of our numerator. Because when you square an absolute value, you can remove the absolute value sign. And then we expanded the brackets, simplified using algebra, canceled out a factor of h in both the numerator and the denominator, and then finally plugged in h equals 0 and simplified.